so okay, sorry. Okay, so sorry. I'm still, just wait a second. In fact, it seems to be a good idea to uh, cut the connection after the first seminar. And then uh, we are able to see which participants have survived, in fact. The <laughs> those who <laughs> really return to the... <laughs> Misha, are you here or just your avatar? Ah, Misha не будет, да? No. Только его аватар. Хорошо. Уф. Миша was taken. Forces. Uh, it's a major force. Okay, uh, so I think I have to uh, share my screen first. Anyway. Basically, I, I will continue working with the same Technical things to be done in this simultaneously. What I think I, I managed. So uh, now I share my screen. Oh, here we are. So uh, so it is uh, what we started with, right? So it's uh, the content. So sh short, short content of previous lectures. All right. So we have this Chern Simon section. We derived uh, the bracket. Then we derived this bracket between the corresponding uh, ordered exponentials. Uh, what I did and what I didn't. Uh, I I actually... So, so, and this is a bracket on the space of uh, connections? Yes, yeah, so, and, and we just uh, uh, induced from this bracket the bracket on the space of uh, these uh, ordered exponentials. Uh, sometimes we call also uh, the elements of this uh, some elements of monodromies uh, because they are they are elements of uh, monodromies uh, for some uh, Fuchsian systems. Mm -hmm. Basically, solutions of uh, of the uh, corresponding equation. Uh, so when d plus a so uh, recall that these are monodromies of solutions so now let me just uh, mention something here so if we have equation of the form d plus a psi uh, equals zero then uh, the corresponding elements if we are interested in monodromies of this solution psi, uh, these elements actually give this solution. So this, me this means that when I go around the circle, uh, some cycle, then psi goes to m psi. So this actually, again, uh, justifies the name. And then we see that these brackets are pretty much uh, 
uh, invariant under some small changes of the contour. Uh, so they for flat uh, for flat connections, they just don't depend on the contour, depend only on uh, uh, homotopical homo uh, type of it. So again, uh, we have uh, some part of uh, geometry here. And then that was my intention to show that actually, so in geometrical part, uh, we have also this uh, Steven Wolpert bracket between geodesics. And in fact, this bracket is nothing but a uh, Goldman bracket on the space of uh, PSL2R connections. Uh, and this is the space of PSL two R connections. Yes, or, yeah, it, it, it's uh, or, of course it, it's not for a general group. Well, Goldman, of course, was for a general group, so it was um, so. But specifically for geometry, when we uh, consider this uh, geodesics lens, then uh, we actually consider only PSL two R part of the story. Mm -hmm. And, uh, as, as we now understand the small part, so to speak. Uh, and here we have the space of hyperbolic structures on uh, uh, surfaces of given genus. Yeah. And, uh, yes. And, uh, yeah. and we have coordinates, which are lengths uh, and uh, uh, Fenhill Nielsen coordinates, yeah. So yeah, so we have uh, Fenhill Nielsen coordinates. They are lengths and twists. Lengths and twists. Uh, in, uh, yeah, and uh, the bracket, uh, the Wolpert bracket, is expressed in terms of these lengths and twists. Yeah. So basically, uh, for the bracket, we just have a dual bracket. So it's, uh, oops, I'm sorry. So we can just write it uh, as L i tau g equal delta i g and all the rest all the rest commute. Great. Uh, sorry, and how uh, this у тебя ниже другая формула для коммутатора или и или же no 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 but this is different this this is for the basis so this yeah. for uh, not non-intersecting cycles mm -hmm. uh, this so, basic cycles so, uh, so I here in, actually, in, uh, in red you have the expression for the bracket and uh, for the basis for a given basis, yeah, and uh, in uh, in uh, uh, black and blue you have you have a, a bracket for uh, between lengths of yes, uh, this is for intersecting this is for for, intersecting. for two intersecting geodesics yes mm -hmm. gamma I and gamma j yeah. Mm. So for non non again non intersecting geodesics, uh, uh, we assume that uh, the corresponding quantities always commute, even in SLN case. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Uh, I don't know. So maybe it's uh, because we uh, uh, we mentioned that it's actually worth to mention that actually this. Uh, these brackets can be obtained. So it's there, actually it's a theorem that they're equivalent to the brackets that we consider later in this talk. Uh, that they are equivalent to the brackets between 
shear coordinates. So indeed, these two uh, these two approaches um, they are equivalent. Okay. And so, so here we have the thirst and shear coordinates. I and we can parameterize the path in the graph using these coordinates. So uh, and, the, and, and this is a different set of coordinates uh, on the same space. Yeah. Yes, a different set of coordinates on the same space. And actually, again, so this is again, so this is a theorem that uh, was uh, that I mentioned right um, just a couple of minutes ago that if you have this uh, simple bracket on the space of shear coordinates, this bracket is actually equivalent to the Goldman bracket and it's equivalent to uh, uh, Fenhel Nielsen bracket, also. let's call it this way also was mostly about the symplectic form. And uh, and this HIs are just uh, the logarithms of the... the logarithms of uh, four ratios. So yes, also can be can be considered mm -hmm. this way. Of the uh, cross ratio, yeah? Of the cross ratio, so yes. So mm -hmm. for two points, uh, if I have two points on the absolute, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Well, okay. that no, that is bad because uh, mm -hmm. actually they are real. Mm -hmm. То есть, когда мы склеиваем два треугольника, у них имеется у этого мы получаем четырехугольник, четыре точки на на проективной прямой, у них есть двойное отношение, которое обозначается через h. И Т, и, соответственно, э, вот скобка H и Т и H и плюс первая равна единице, где э, H1, H2, H3, они вот так вот встречаются в одной точке, да? Да. Окей. Let's proceed further. You have promised cluster. Uh, uh, properties of these coordinates, yeah? Okay, so yes. It just, I wrote uh, the corresponding four term ratio and So we have, uh, and basically again, so it's uh, some uh, not very long calculation to show that uh, these relations produce a Goldman bracket, but uh, it's uh, way much longer to show that uh, that they also equivalent to Fenchel Nielsen bracket. It's technically, well, especially, I, I would say, especially commutation relations between twist corners was really technically difficult. But when we are in SLN case, it's very hard to define what, uh, what even uh, we are uh, speaking when we are talking about Fenkel-Nielsen coordinates, uh, again, and in this case yes in this case definitely some analogs of shear coordinates are much uh, much more advantages in terms of descriptions you mean they are much more advanced yeah yes yes so mm -hmm. basically we have a machinery uh, just producing all answers and that's what i want to explain mm -hmm. today 
Uh, I started it uh, on the previous talk, but it was at the end, so let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, my main example with which we will exist. Um, uh, by the way, by, by the way, uh, is there any uh, connection between uh, N in SLN and N in CPGS? No, no connection whatsoever. So let me let me actually replace this by. Uh, different letters so i i think in my notes i use n capital n capital yeah n capital yes. is more uh and one thing that possibly i will uh i would prefer to have this n small uh non-zero so um, basically this means so if i again scroll up to the picture that we have uh, that we have some starting point somewhere on the boundary like we have here from which all um, basically all passes start and terminate at some point so we don't uh, i don't say that we have just one point but it's better to have one uh, so it's also it will be some natural base point uh, uh, for a homotopy group of the surface. And again, it's uh, I don't put any restriction on the number of these points. Can be one, can be more. So it's not. But it will impose some conditions that will uh, later call a groupoid condition. Okay, uh, so uh, of course I was a little bit, uh, a little bit sloppy in this part, and uh, but that's my intention today to show technically how we can construct the corresponding uh, matrices that that we for which we want you see so uh, again it will be my main example this triangle that we have here uh, like oops. so this triangle it can consider it it will have much more uh, involved structure inside but so far i just say that we want to define uh, some transport matrices it's necessary to go down. but why what time is it sorry i mean now it's half past six. Oh, sorry is it... <laughs> hi <Ian. laughs> okay. sorry i didn't turn it off sorry Okay, mm. so I just want to show today that this relation that I just postulated, so this relations between uh, the corresponding matrices that I just postulated on uh, at the end of the previous talk, they are natural, and they naturally appear in, uh, well, cluster algebras. So far, we didn't define what uh, what we have uh, in terms of the cluster algebras. Okay, so, uh, this was a technical part where I tried to describe uh, the corresponding quantities. I will uh, make examples right now. To, um, to show how we can operate with these expressions and how we can construct them. So, uh, so, so, so. So, this was at the end of the previous talk. And uh, basically, I won't just recall what, what was that. So, uh, we say that uh, we can actually join quantities in different 
in different um, triangles. Still, we don't know what we are talking about, uh, how these triangles look, look like. But what we know, what I try, what I was trying to prove last time is that from uh, this algebra that we have here, again. Uh, sorry, are these triangles those that appear in introduction uh, share coordinates? Uh, in uh, geometrical case, yes. Mm -hmm. And again, I will talk about uh, this relation, how it, uh, how it goes in SL2. Oops. But, so here, for instance, here is the example. So, uh, and actually, I, actually, we'll see. We'll see these triangles later, many times, if, you, if time permit. But uh, what I want to mention is that indeed these uh, elementary algebras that we have, they produce the corresponding Goldman bracket. So as soon as we will be able to uh, get expressions satisfying these relations, then basically uh, we can upgraded to the Goldman brackets for monodromies on uh, for monodromies of SLN on uh, any surface. Any surface with uh, at least uh, one uh, mark point on the boundary to be uh, consistent. In principle, we can also do it for surfaces without mark points then uh, Semi-classically, everything is, is uh, well defined, so we can just evaluate uh, these expressions for the corresponding traces. In quantum case, it can be uh, slightly tricky to define, but so on. But in semi-classically, we can also consider uh, surfaces without mark, uh, without mark points, but with boundaries, so boundaries are uh, relevant. Otherwise, we don't have an ideal triangle decomposition. Сейчас, подожди, пожалуйста. Значит, ты хочешь ввести скобку аналогичную скобке Гольдмана, да, на пространстве на пространстве плоских связностей со значениями в Веселен, да? Да, да. То есть для э, скобка Гольдмана для SL2 работает, а мы хотим... Ну, скобка Гольдмана работает и для SLN. Гольдман uh, ah. proved it for SLN. So it's, uh, yeah. it's uh, definitely credits to Bill for proving this. Uh, so, so we know what the Goldman bracket is, but uh, we would like to uh, have a tool to write it out explicitly. Yes, so to parameterize it in some nice way. Mm -hmm. To introduce okay. some nice, so to speak, nice coordinates. And my intention is to show that these nice coordinates are nothing but cluster variables. Uh -huh. Nice coordinates. Sorry, it was mentioned. Yeah? Sorry, it was mentioned in the very first uh, lecture that there would be some Hamiltonian reduction. And it seems uh, to me that surely Surely, if you are now in the flat situation, and if you are dealing with closed uh, curves, we must be after reduction. There must have been some reduction taking place. Uh, well, yes. Um, Ian, uh, I have like maybe four page of notes about this reduction, but uh, so this will take us it, it just I'm repeating something that somebody else said it was not my idea but somebody said no, 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 I know it had, so I probably it was probably Misha who said that right it was by the way but the point is that it's clear that this is not the same as the golden Oops. bracket it's obviously related but it's not the same it's something which descends from the golden bracket um, well I 
don't think so. Well, because your Goldman bracket was defined for any connection. It doesn't need to be flat. That's what I just what you told yes, me. Yes, so it's done, but that's uh, basically, <laughs> well, uh, I think that uh, in the original paper by Goldman, it was already for flat connections. So, uh, because... Uh, so probably your bracket is a bit different in that case. Your bracket is uh, before reduction, the one you showed us in the first. Well, time. yes, but uh, so, so, so the only so that's that's what my intention to show that it's more general actually than just uh, uh, the bracket that we obtained by the reduction. And the only thing to be shown is that reduction is consistent for this bracket. Okay, fine. So and well, that's probably. Uh, Well, it's consistent by algebraic reasons, right? Because for this, we just need to prove the consistency. So that's, uh, that's actually the bracket does not depend on the choice of the representative of the corresponding homotopy element. Gauge freedom. Yes, and this, this is easy. This is just follows from uh, this, uh, from this relation that I didn't describe in uh, full generality, but in principle it's easy. So it should, let me just scroll up. It's just somewhere. Oops, it's, 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 it's before geometrical part even. Yeah, so this, so this basically uh, I mean, uh, oops, uh, these relations that uh, whatever is the number of intersections, if the corresponding loops are contractible, then uh, the result uh, will be the same. But uh, again, I must say that in uh, Goldman original paper, it was, uh, it was a different way, more geometrical, I would say, uh, based on Beltrami differentials and uh, nice pairings between Beltrami differentials and uh, two forms on the surface. So it's really nice. It's just that I'm not sure that uh, we have time to cover it. Okay, so again, yeah, or well, what I may recommend, maybe some of younger guys mm -hmm. or girls will, <laughs> if they are interested, they can do it. I yeah. can share my notes as well. Okay, but yes, uh, my intention today is actually uh, more different and much more explicit. Uh, and this is to show how it's all uh, fit into the agenda of the laboratory, into cluster algebras. The agenda of the laboratory is cluster geometry, and uh, that's essentially okay, good. what you are going to speak about. <laughs> okay, so now let's speak about uh, how we can construct the corresponding uh, monodromes. And for this, let me use, so now I start some original part of this talk. So, and uh, again, uh, I will use the opportunity to refer to previous talks, maybe by uh, Misha, because I remember that he defined at least what is, uh, so I recall, so the definition, what is a planner, a cyclic, network. Not any, uh, in, so it's actually what is, it's planner. Directed graph. Traditionally, we denote the edges by double arrows. There is some reason for that. 
And we say that this graph uh, is, uh, has the following restriction. So basically it has three valent vertices of uh, painted black and white. No, uh, vice versa. So this will be white vertex in my notation. And black is such that it has two incoming arrows and one outgoing. And also it has some uh, one valent external vertices that we don't draw. Uh, such that we can actually draw it on, on a disk where all these external vertices are on the boundary. And uh, it's not very important restriction, but in my notes mostly we'll have the following picture. We have, so you see that th this one valent vertices uh, are different by e incoming and outgoing edges. So these vertices with outgoing edges are called sources and vertices with incoming edges are called sinks. And for the time being, I will assume that the corresponding uh, network uh, and inside there is no one valent vertices so they can be uh, always uh, driven to the boundaries so inside we have some structures so we have uh, the black vertices white vertices and the corresponding uh, arrows between them we'll see examples so I will not draw it here but one more condition that I impose, it's also not very much restrictive, but uh, again, let's assume that uh, there is uh, no cycles. There is no cycle, no closed cycles of these edges in the graph. So, and Again, I use, I use this another N, so it will be uh, calligraphic N, whatever I can to the best of my uh, skills to draw calligraphic. And what else? So what we have more? So if we have this, uh, structure. Then uh, we can define also because we sorry so just What's wrong? Learn your... Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Like... Uh, so, uh, what is important for me is also that uh, because it's planner, we have a well defined notion of uh, faces inside here. Faces can be any, so it's uh, just we have. Uh, we associate now to every face of the graph a corresponding variable. Uh, uh, 
uh, which we assume actually uh, to be that and uh, in classical case we assume that z are real positive variables in the quantum case we assume that uh, we associate to that some uh, positively defined Hermitian operator. So Hermitian means that I have some uh, uh, star structure, conjugation structure, and obviously uh, that star is equal to that. And well, then uh, we can define the path. The path always starts at, at the source. So it starts for the source and goes to sink. Mm -hmm. And the faces are, are not necessarily triangles, yeah? Uh, what faces are whatever they are mm -hmm. they are generally they are never triangles most of them are actually uh, hexagonal for uh. in uh, most examples but again there is no restriction it can be basically any any face of any, of, of. What we, uh, what we probably, uh, even this is not restriction. So I don't even impose a restriction that we don't have uh, faces of uh, size two. The only uh, restriction that we have that, uh, but this follows from the condition that there is no sex that we never start, uh, that no edges start and terminate at the same vertex. So there is no, no, no elementary loops. So if we have a path, uh, let's call it Amiga, and uh, we have this path in this, say, having this path, we can define the weight of this path omega p to be the product of all uh, variables of all uh, faces that lie above, that lie to the right of this path. Again, because of planarity condition, we have the notion of right and left. So we take just the product of all uh, that that uh, correspond to faces uh, to the right from this path in this picture. In uh, quantum case, we also impose some small, it will not play a very important role uh, here, but nevertheless, I have to mention that uh, we uh, want to associate, yeah? Uh, sorry, you take the product over all the faces or only neighboring faces to the right? No, side. over all the faces. All yes, the faces. Uh, so, so uh, a path splits, uh, splits the disk into two parts. Yes, and, and all uh, all all, uh, all, all variables from one part uh, from one part contribute. Okay, great. So we impose the condition that the corresponding product must be Hermitian itself, and it's ensured by what we call a while ordering in physics, or uh, how we call it in mathematics. It's uh, it's defined for the lattice of these uh, variables. I still didn't say how they actually commute. What uh, is uh, the bracket between them, but it will come in a second. So we always assume that actually all these variables satisfy some 
commutation relations of the following sort. So it's Q, uh, well, here is, there is some form between them defined by the uh, corresponding adjacency matrix. So they have uh, these homogeneous commutation relations where Q itself is some, um, basically some complex number. So again, usually we assume that it's uh, anti-Hermitian in a sense. Okay, and uh, because of this and because of this uh, uh, star structure, there is a unique expression uh, in this product such uh, that uh, basically if it uh, has it like that, then for two variables that i z j, the this while form is can be written as q minus one half i j. that i is a j, or as you see, it's actually equal to, if I use this, it's q one half i j, that j, that i, and you see that actually one is a, a star of the other. So this, so this form will be uh, correspondingly uh, self-adjoint. Well, but well, that's some uh, small part. But what we actually want to show is uh, how we can construct the corresponding uh, variables. So consider some elementary again, elementary part of it. So we say that consider this white vertex and I will do the following. I will cut a small triangle around this vertex. And I will associate some variables. It's not still that, it's some different, A, B, and C corresponding to wedges of this triangle. And uh, with this, for, for this triple of variables, I just impose, well, we'll see how it works. So uh, it can be done in two ways. So I will impose the corresponding commutation relations. And then by, uh, by say A, B, then B, C is uh, Q, C, B, and finally C, A is Q, A, C. In particular, we immediately see that, say, uh, the product of all three variables is a Casimir. And for the black vertex, uh, let's do the same, but... And is it, uh, it is a Casimir where? For this algebra, for this. For this algebra, yeah. Yes. Ah. So, so ABC uh, commutes with any, with A, with B, and with C. Yeah, so the product can use with each, each of these variables and yeah. with itself, of course. Uh -huh. Great. And if we have a black vertex, so I do uh, the same small triangle also. And you see that it's uh, cyclically invariant, right? So we can rotate it. Again, I introduce uh, the same sort of variables, A, B, and C. And now uh, it has, it will have an opposite. Commutation relations, so.
But still, the product is the Casimir. Now, what we can do? Uh, first, I will describe the, uh, how we can construct uh, actual cluster variable. So first, we say. Извините, но мы же еще считаем, что все квадраты нули, да? Нет, нет, почему? Это не нужно? Совершенно не нужно. Зачем квадраты нули? Хорошо, спасибо. Ну, я просто коммутировать начал. Хорошо, ладно. Нет, ну... сейчас, что значит коммутировать кого с чем? Ну, как вы сказали, Казимиры, я вот начал коммутировать АБС а, с операторами умножения на А, на Б и на С. Да. Ну, let's do it, so it's... Uh... Ну, если бы А квадрат нулю, тогда АБС да. было бы... АБС А было бы нул тогда. Да-да-да, именно так, да. И, и тогда... Let's try, so we have C, A is Q, A, C, right? So it's A... I mean, saying, saying Kazimir, we, we assume Q, that you, Q, for some bracket is zero. A, B, A, C. No, well, Kazimir is something that commutes. So then... T, A, C, Q, A, C, it means. Okay, okay. Then we have A, B. We'll mm -hmm. give Q minus one times Q. A, A, B, C, so you see that. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so uh, first, uh, in the natural condition that variables in different triangles mutually commute so so basically these are the only non-trivial relations that we have in the network but second that uh, probably uh, also pertain to what uh, What Sereja uh, tools, uh, what Sereja mentioned, so if we have a face in the graph, face in, oops, ah. so face again, in most occasions, most faces in, inside are hexagonal, so that's, and in this case, we have, uh, actually six triangles i don't say yes which one is which i don't say which vertices are white and which are black so it it's actually doesn't matter here because so we have six wedges here six right must be six yes and that variable by condition is just the product of all the corresponding wedge variables so it's a product of over all wedges con constituting this the corresponding uh, phase and here even uh, we don't need any uh, ordering because uh, by condition because they come from different triangles all these a's uh, mutually commute So it's uh, that is automatically, and uh, oh, and oh, I also assume that all A, B, C, uh, they are they are self conjoined. So and for external, you see. So for external, there is no external uh, red edges. So if, for instance, if this is a network with uh, six sources and things, then this is a whole. Uh, then we have only. Uh, so there is no external edges. So uh, all uh, this dual graph is uh, is a, somehow compact in this sense. Okay. 
But for external edges, we just have the corresponding product, say, uh, or, uh, sorry, for uh, external, so to speak, faces, we have just the products of the corresponding uh, variables, but just in this, uh, in this case, just of two variables. So far, it looks very, I think, uh, very elementary, right? I probably you agree. And now what uh, we want to prove, we want now to define, so we define the uh, variables uh, oh, omega p related to passes. Oh, Maxim, uh, I didn't hear well, so. А я еще раз хочу уточнить, там в коммутационных соотношениях участвуют две переменные, которые соответствуют двум граням, соединенным ребром, а вовсе не треугольником. Соответственно, кто, кто, кто коммутирует? Там переменные, которые соответствуют граням, которые не имеют общих ребер. Правильно я понимаю? Что значит разным? Нет, нет, нет. Ну, ну давай. Let, let's consider one example. So let's consider uh, just simply so that's uh, again. So let us have uh, one white vertex and one black. Oops, sorry. So here is white, and here is this one is black. So, and this is the whole network. So we have just two triangles. We have two triangles and we have one, two, three, four, uh, four faces. So if I, again, I used to, here I have A, B and C, and here I have, uh, say, let's call it differently, let's call it, a prime, B prime, and C prime. So then we have that all, all these red variables commute with all uh, blue variables. А, это значит получается, что переменные вовсе не граням соответствуют. B B B штрих это две разные переменные. No, no, no. Uh, sorry, maybe it's my pronunciation. So it's not edges, right? It's badges. Ugly. So we have here that, here one that is uh, the product of this B and B prime, another that is the product of C A prime, and the, uh, so that one, let's call that two, and that three and that four, I just, uh, just the corresponding variables themselves. Леня, по-русски, чему, соответств... чему соответствует переменная Z, значит? Ну, в смысле, чему? К какому геометрическому объекту соответствует переменная? Никакому, так, Никакому. пока не ясно. Ну, вот B и B' это чему они отвечают? Не готов я ответить на этот вопрос. В SL2 случае готов. А там, по-моему, в начале переменные сопоставлялись гранем. А там, это, а... То есть, значит, у нас на самом деле есть Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. А вот эти буквочки А и Б это вспомогательные для того, чтобы с помощью них написать коммутационные соотношения для, перем... для произведения Z. -ов. Ну, как-то тут это очень неявно видно. Ну, не явно, непонятно. Сейчас, на самом деле, есть ответ на Сережин вопрос, но он довольно длинный. Это... И опять же, я не уверен, что он такой вот в общем случае, в геометрическом. А как на русский язык приводится слово «вэдж»? 
А хрен его знает. Ну как, такой кусочек пирога. Галка. А? Галочка. Это, в общем, скорее геометрическое понятие. Ну, клин, можно сказать. Ну, клинышек, да. Это тот, тот же самый вэдж, как бы, то же самое слово, которое вэдж продукт, да? Да. Ну, вот как ну, бы клин. Да. Или как порция торта. Пиццы, пиццы. Да, порция да. пиццы, скажем. Нет, Нет, прям, прям, прям сразу заниматься этим хочется. And you see, it's, it's very, very close analogy here in this picture, right? So that's the whole pizza where... So here the whole pizza is just uh, the whole face, right? And we construct it out of wedges. In Russian, it is sector. Вот для этого примера можно можно увидеть, как переменные z э, коммутируют для разных индексов. Например, z1 и z2 как коммутируют? Или, mm, или z, z2 и z3 как коммутируют? А, да, можно, конечно, как раз хороший пример. Uh, uh, so for that, uh, for oops, for uh, z one and z two, what what do we have? Uh, so z one is a b prime times c a prime. So uh, primed and non primed commute. So we can immediately write it as b c b prime a prime. And then I use uh, the corresponding structures. And but just remember that in uh, in for white vertex we have a one cyclic ordering, and for uh, black vertex we have an opposite. So for example, we have that BC in this case is QCB, UCB. And B prime, A prime will be actually also with Q. So it will be double. So Q will be doubled. So all together is Q square. And again, because they commute, I can write it as uh, uh, primed and non-primed C. Uh, okay, so let me do it. So then we have C, B, A prime, B prime, and then I can commute these two, and so I get Q square, C, A prime, times, uh, times B, B prime, right? So commutation relations, when we have, when we live between So in other words, if I have the following structure, uh, I have black vertex and I have white vertex and they're joined by the edge. It, you see, this doesn't depend on the direction of this edge. If I have the corresponding variables like here, Z1 and Z2, then their commutation relation will be uh, doubled as regarding uh, the commutation relation between the corresponding. And well, uh, what we also can say is that uh, we can now uh, consider a dual graph and in this, du this dual graph will encode the corresponding commutation relation. So in this case, I never remember the direction of this Arrow direction depends again. Uh, I think it's actually must be opposite, but uh, but 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 so this arrow, red arrow, means that the corresponding uh, variables have this commutation relation. And again, if I consider the same example, now with Z4 and Z3. So what will be the corresponding dual uh, quiver that we obtain? 
uh, we have that. So we have that one, that two. So here we have this solid arrow. And with the corresponding Z4 and Z3, it's easy to check. Well, maybe not so easy, but we have this, what we usually draw as a dashed arrow. And this dashed arrow means that uh, so dashed arrow means that uh, actually how we do it. So probably dashed arrow is Q instead of Q squared. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. So that's two Z that four is Q. Q stands for the dashed. Z four Z two. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, so let me next define what we call uh, transport matrix, elements of transport matrix. So we say that, again, consider an arbitrary uh, directed acyclic network N and define so i and j so i enumerate now so uh, things and j is a source and we can define tij to be just the sum of all pa over all passes that start at source and terminated this given thing of the corresponding uh, omega pij. And basically these elements of uh, this transport matrix, they will be the main uh, characters in the play in what follows. Because uh, the main lemma is, so take N to be again directed uh, cyclic net uh, planner. Yes, this is very important, most important actually. Planner network. And again, impose some condition, impose condition uh, that uh, things and sources are separated. So basically we think about them that sources are on one side of the disk and things are on the other side. Then, because in this case is TIJ, uh, so with uh, separated, uh, let's enumerate them, say. Uh, So let's be n sources and m things, and then t i j. You see, it's uh, it will be m times n matrix. So this one commutation relations are matrix commutation relation relations. So we have. R T1, T2, 
is equal to t2 t1 r where except that these r matrices in principle they have different size so it's here is their matrix of size m and here is our matrix of size n well actually m squared times n squared but uh, so it's not exactly a size of the corresponding matrix so this is a matrix uh, that uh, correspond to interchange between the spaces of the corresponding dimension. So, uh, so here we should have some sequence of R matrices, yeah? Uh, uh, the size. Yeah. It is, I mean, yeah. to Just the some. size. So they all given by the same expression that we had before. Uh, where? long before right when i so here they're all given by the very same expression mm -hmm. okay yeah so this one it just that their size is different so basically the corresponding uh so the corresponding uh, is are uh, defined in, uh, in so it's for Rn if I put here n uh, this Eij defines uh, they belong to n cross n oh n n n small sorry So this n is again is nothing so far to do with the size uh, of the uh, of the algebra, but uh, it's SLN, I suppose, right? It's for SLN, right? Uh, well, for SLN is slightly different. For SLN, oh, okay. sorry, so GLN then GLN. It's, yeah. it's for GLN. For SLN, it will okay. be just sorry. multiplied by the um, by the factor by the power of Q minus one over n. E times E or something. Yes. Okay, so I wanted to change this to a small n. But otherwise, it's precisely the same R matrix. And meanwhile, in these relations, you see, I can multiply it by any Q factor, so the relations will not be changed. Proof. Let me actually tell you the proof because it's uh, it seems uh, that it looks like a really uh, really uh, no no at least not an easy statement, right? But the proof uh, that's why we actually use this R matrices in the proof because uh, it's very much advantageous if we want to uh, join different networks. So basically, we can construct any network out of elementary move. So we just, uh, what we do. So let me mention. So we start with sources. And so far, we uh, don't associate anything to. So it's just the unit. Uh, it's just the unit. Uh, just the corresponding. Just the unit matrix. So we start with the unit matrix, and then we do the following. We. So at each step, uh, we, for instance, so if we have one add to uh, what we can see so we add one uh, white vertex somewhere so we have white vertex and we continue all this uh, all this uh, the corresponding arrows with this white vertex as we know we associate a corresponding triangle and the corresponding 
uh, wedge, 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 maybe Ian will. Uh, uh, we'll... oh, there is a confusion between a wedge and edge. I see. I didn't realize. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so this is a confusion because this is my pronunciation, possibly. Well, if you said veg, you would be safe, but your pronunciation is too good for that. <laughs> oh, come on. No, if okay. it were not so good, you would say veg, and then you would be safe. Okay, so what I want, I want, yes, uh, so I want this A, B, and C variables. And then with this elementary move, I put into the correspondence the corresponding matrix. So if, if it was N here, then it will be N plus one on this side. So it's N times N plus one matrix. And this matrix is very simple. So it's uh, it has a bunch of units. Oops. It looks one. like the other way around. It looks like N minus one on the left hand side. Uh, what, why? Looks like N minus one and N on the right. <laughs> we see it explicitly. It does, just... done, uh, on the left, is, so it's if it's N here, uh, then it's N plus one on the right, right? On the left. N plus one arrows. Yeah, yeah, I understand. N plus one arrows. N plus one arrows, yes. And uh, outgoing arrows are uh, stretched along, uh, along uh, rows of the corresponding matrix. So it has n plus n plus one rows and n uh, columns, and this is a matrix like that. So it starts with units, because uh, when I I just look what is above the corresponding arrow. So above the corresponding arrow was nothing, nothing until I I uh, hit this arrow of number say some number. So then. We have this A variable on the top of, well, which arrow? So I mean this one. Oops. Uh, then for the next arrow, I have, so uh, all the rest of terms are zero. So I don't indicate zeros in the corresponding expression. Then the next arrow above it, I have A, B. And above all the rest, I have A, B, C. So this is actually the uh, matrix that correspond to this, uh, to the corresponding move. So this small part of the corresponding network. And the next one, the next elementary move is, of course, this black vertex. And for black vertex, uh, I will probably start with now, as Ian proposed, with n plus 1. Then I have this nice, so let's be n plus 1. And then uh, you, I have, you have to have two uh, colliding arrows. Yes, I have two neighbor colliding uh, arrows. So this is what, when we use the planarity. Because of course, it's also important that these arrows um, are neighbor. And again, if I uh, do the same, except that this triangle is now, uh, it's, uh, it's not easy to draw it because it's, uh, so it has these vertex, vertices. Again, what, what was my notation here? So it was uh, A, oops, was A, uh, B, and C. And now it's a matrix of uh, opposite side n times n plus one. Again, it start with the units. Then again, at some point, it has a, a, b, and then again. And well, it's easy to see that if we have any planner directed 
acyclic network, then we can uh, con uh, then we can compose it out of these uh, elementary moves. So every time, every move you see, every move corresponds just to gluing one more triangle to this to the corresponding network. So this is how you build your T's? Yes, yes. So if I have a T, so any T in any network is just the product uh, from right to left of this elementary moves. I don't, I didn't make, uh, didn't put any notation, but uh, for these matrices, so possibly we can do it. So it's, uh, I don't know. So it's, uh, let it be T up or down and the other will be something like that. So we have the corresponding product in some order of the corresponding elementary moves. And now the only, actually the only thing that we have to prove to, con to cast, conclude the proof is that each of these two moves satisfies the same R matrix algebra because then, well, basically we say that if I have uh, so if all and here and now I can be more precise because for T up we have here n plus one. Uh, and here are n and the corresponding so uh, these two relations implies immediately uh, that the corresponding Uh, transport matrix, whatever it is, it satisfies uh, this R T T T T R famous R T T T T R. So what about what about when you have an up and a down together? When you have T one up and T two down, I mean they that can happen. Oh, they can mute. Yes. So again, I because uh, because again because we have three uh, only variables inside the triangle don't mm -hmm. commute. So every move corresponds to gluing one more triangle to the network. So all uh, the only T's that do not commute are exactly those corresponding to gluing the same triangle in this relation. So, so in all this chain only if I have T1 and T2, Это только для тех операторов, которые являются произведениями, разделенными такими произведениями. Сначала в одну сторону, а потом в другую, да? Не, 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 Нет, совершенно не важно. Совершенно произвольно. Да. Whatever it is. So the only uh, pairs that do not commute are precisely the pairs that match here in this product. And so when we uh, when we when we put our matrix on the left, then these are matrix uh, just uh, you know how it works. So if I put our matrix, then uh, it's actually uh, it's T1, T2, I can always write it, it's R. And then I 
take this product pairwise. So it's the first pair, then the second pair, and then uh, say the Uh, and then the next to the last and the last pair. So, and then you see that then I have this relation and I write that it's T2, T1 down R. And then I take this R matrix to all other products. In each time, it just uh, change the corresponding spaces. So, so at the end, we'll get again. Then I use again the commutativity condition at the end, and well, this provides uh, the desired expression. Again, re recall that every time I follow. So it was if it was uh, RM, then it will be say if it was down. I don't remember. So again, it's uh, when it's down, then it's uh, actually R RM minus one. But any time, every time, uh, the corresponding dimension actually is consistent with the dimension of the product standing on the next in the next pair. So it's one of this uh, one of advantages of this R matrix relation that we can actually uh, relatively easy move it through all these uh, products of matrices. So uh, maybe I will prove uh, I don't know one relation, right? Let's see how it works. Uh, for this uh, T down. So uh, it's actually, it's, so if I have R T one down, T two down, it's actually uh, relatively easier I don't know. Uh, it's need some calculation, but it's uh, not uh, very difficult to show that these parts actually uh, for this part, this relation RTT relation will be trivial in a sense. So it will be uh, satisfied identically. So the only non-trivial part to check is for this product A and AB. Let's see. So uh, for this, we need just two by uh, R matrix of size two. And again, it's actually in the product of spaces, it has four by four. So it has one Q and the only non-trivial element is here. Famous kulish sklanin R matrix. Uh, probably the first one ever invented. And we want to check. So, uh, so we also need R1. R1 is just Q. So we need to check that actually, let's see, that R2. And then I have a Oops, I have it's here. Uh, order is important. So A, A, B, cross A, A, B. It's one and two is equal to A, A, B, two, cross A, A, B, one times R1. And Basically, why I want to present it because it also provides some insight how uh, these relations look in real life. Let me probably continue here. 
what is the first product? So uh, how we can <coughs> write it in terms of the R matrices? Oh, maybe now let's, <coughs> I need more space. So uh, we have this. Q1, one Q, and here Q minus Q minus one. What is the first direct product? So we have uh, just uh, four, so I have elements of the first space in the, uh, so we have a four vector. So this first element is an element from the first space. Second element is an element from the second space. So it's A, A, B, A, A, B. And we want to check that this is, now I change the order. And of course it's, uh, now the first element is from the second space. But I still uh, have the same affiliation. So the first space uh, multiply first two columns. And this is multiplied just by Q. Let's see. Uh, you see that, uh, so, we have uh, four equations, but the first equation is... Sorry, sorry, you wrote that this uh, A, B are columns just, but they should be also operators, no? They are operators, they do not... Uh, so if it is a, an operator, it should be four by four matrix? No, why? No, 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 in, in the quantum space, we don't specify. So they are operator in the quantum space. It's actually not four by four, it's actually infinite. So most, most of these operators don't have any uh, finite dimensional uh, representation. They are operators in some quantum space. They okay, not... okay, okay, but this, the element of this tensor product space? The elements of this tensor product space. So this, the first uh, product is A, A, B, one, cross A, A, B, two. It's just, a, now, it's, it's an element, it's not a matrix. It's, a, it's an element of the tensor product space. It's not an operator acting on this tensor product space. Well, it's, we always think about this as, uh, of course, so these are, uh, basically, that's how I wrote. So we say that it's uh, actually. Wait, wait, wait a minute. This this represents some t with arrow, but t with arrow is an operator. Uh, so we say that the first element. What is that? If if to write it honestly, sorry. So it's one zero cross uh, a, and a is in this quantum space. Uh, quantum. Okay. And this is just a vector in, uh, well, in two dimensional space. Plus zero one uh, cross AB. This is the first and the second uh, column, so it's in one, in space one. And then we multiply it by the second, so the second is in space two uh, times, or times the same A in the quantum space plus zero one in space two times A B. And now I have just to make some, uh, some convention how I, how I express this, uh, uh, this ord. So we just say that in this force, because uh, for this product of these two spaces, we need to make some convention. So convention oh. is such that uh, we have elements of the first space in the first two columns. So for instance, the first element, so let's see, it's uh, one zero, one zero times one zero is just. 
Okay, so I thank you. I understand. It's not it's not a column. It's a matrix four by one, of size four by one. It's four by one, right? If yes, so it's four by one. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. So there are four uh, there are four uh, equations. Two of them are. Uh, identical so because the first one so let's write let's write them all and let's see so i just started writing it there so the first equation is like that second is again a a b is equal to a b q a b a it's already non-trivial. Second is even more non-trivial because it contains Q minus Q minus one A, A, B plus A, B, A equal uh, Q, A, A, B. And the last equation is again trivial because it's that we observe actually in this R matrix business that uh, many equations are redundant, so to speak. Uh, but the, again, the advantage is that we can uh, make uh, nevertheless some algebraic manipulations with this R matrices that possibly are not so easy to be done in in a standard approach so let's let's solve so we don't need these two the only non-trivial so we also uh, assume that we can inverse so these uh, elements because they are positively definite operators they can be invertible so for instance here i can multiply by a minus one and then we have a b equal q v a. So far, so good. In this relation, you see that again, some this is canceled, and we have that a b a is equal q minus one a a b. And it is the same relation, right? So it, because it's just b a equal q minus one. A, B. So basically all these uh, relations just produce one single relation between A and B. And now, well, I leave it probably to the audience because to make the same evaluation for the next. So this was for this T up. So you can try uh, for T down, you can make the following evaluation for this matrix T up, except that for T up. It's suspicious because there's no C involved anywhere. I would guess there must be a C in one of your T up or T down. It must uh, have it's actually uh, misleading because C is here. C is in these terms with A, B, C. Yeah, but that's Casimir, so. Well, it's still still it's there because it's it's important to have it. Without these terms, we cannot construct the uh, whole transport matrix. So you would have encoded in this relations. You would discover the AC and BC commutator relations as well. Yes, because we have to import. We have to actually uh, to find out that. Uh, these operators are commuting with everything. Otherwise, uh, so th this 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 is essential. If they don't commute with A or A B, then it doesn't work. It's not all relations that we have. That's what I say. So it's uh, I still have to. Uh, uh, so R T T equals T T R doesn't encode all the relations. No, it's encode all. Uh, okay, no, sorry. No. Sorry. No, it, it's in code on or all relations. It's in code re, also the relation that these elements, uh, these units, and uh, these elements A, B, C, they must commute with everything. Otherwise, it doesn't work. 
but they they can be any but they must be commuting elements okay so it's actually misleading that you say that c is not c must be here but c is in these terms So as soon as we get the same relation for uh, for the other uh, transport matrix, well, and again, I will leave it to the audience to show that again, if I go here, so here I have a so I here have uh, B C A in this. Uh, direction and here I have A, B, C in opposite direction as you see and I leave it to you to see that actually the second sort of relation with T up now it's uh, 1, 2 equal T2 up T1 up R Again, in this case, it will boil down to a similar relation, except that now it's for uh, uh, for row vectors. So in this case, this R eventually come to Q, and this R will be this foolish uh, Sklyanin expression, and it will produce well. Uh, Recall that here was one cyclic order and here is another cyclic order for ABC, but the relations will be uh, will be the same. So, in other words, we can also start with postulating, say, R matrix relations, and from these R matrix relations, uh, we may obtain we may obtain the corresponding commutation relations that uh, I had just at the very beginning. So, so these two sets we have here. They actually are equivalent to this R matrix relations. In, in fact, I just realized if it's correct to say that if you just give the A, B, you only give the A, B commutation relation and the statement that A, B, C is a Casimir, then you get the other two for free. Of course. Yeah. Okay, I understand, yeah. Okay, so, uh, and actually it's uh, quite uh, interesting. So uh, maybe I will because it's still it's almost time but i want to make it uh, uh, to the next statement so one more statement is actually we can even discard and waive the conditions that they don't have cycles because uh, same theorem exactly the same statement will be valid even in the case where we have cycles it just the proof is longer but in principle, we can waive the condition. So we can consider actually any planar network with cycles. Uh, so the only probably thing that I will require is that still sources and things are uh, separated because otherwise we cannot define in a good way uh, the corresponding matrix. But we can still define the uh, even in the very general case where we don't impose any condition of separations of sources, side of sources, things, and uh, no condition on cycles. Uh, still, uh, we have a closed, uh, closed and simple algebra of the corresponding uh, transport elements. Possibly, uh, I will not draw it. I prepared my another slide for that. Uh, but before 
before we come to it, before we come to some nice pictures uh, that I will not draw, I, they uh, prepared before in advance. Uh, let's consider one interesting example, one uh, interesting situation, namely when we have exactly n sources and say two n things like here. So we have n and we separate these things into two groups. The corresponding matrix then have this block form M1 and M2. And again, some exercise So this block matrix satisfies the corresponding uh, R matrix relations. So we have, uh, so let's call it uh, T. So we have, sorry. And T is now matrix of size two N times N. statement of lemma that having these commutation relations we these commutation relations imply a commutation relations between m1 and m2 so this implies that each of these n by n matrices. Uh, so let's call it I. Satisfy our matrix relation of its own. And second is that if I consider the commutation relations between M1 and M2, they have this interesting form. So these relations, <coughs> as you see, are exactly the relations that we postulated before, right? When we consider the Goldman bracket and when we consider actually the corresponding uh, product of uh, monodromies or products of transport matrices. So indeed this justifies the corresponding, uh, justifies the corresponding uh, All, all this picture. So indeed we say that having uh, this network, planner directed network, we can construct uh, the corresponding Goldman bracket. And actually, well, It's actually uh, not exactly in the statement, sorry. So we have a, uh, consider a, direct product of this network because we have uh, these networks associated with each uh, triangle. So how many, we need as many of them as the number of triangles also now inside this triangle, we have uh, more involved structures. So it's for the surface of genus G. I don't remember it by heart, but it's, I believe it's 4G minus four plus plus two. 
Let's do in. Uh, two in. Not quite sure, but okay. Always good to check. So if we have, no, I think plus n, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's definitely just n. Always good to check for some case that we know if g is zero, it's s is one, and n is three, might be one. Yes, so it works. So uh, what to say? So it's no more a planner, right? This network. It's just a product of planner networks. And in this product, we can claim that in this product, we can define the corresponding uh, monodromy elements as a corresponding product of transport matrices. Each in its, in its own triangle. So uh, for, uh, of course, it all works well for M. Uh, graph simple. That is that uh, these indices do not coincide. So I is not equal J. Oops. All uh, pluses are graph simple. And then for this uh, transport matrices, we have the golden uh, the golden commutation relation. Okay, so uh, I I think that anyway, it's uh, it's just right about the time to stop. Yeah, it's true. But what I never, uh, what I want to mention, so let me also yeah, I want to to, sh uh, to share another screen for a second. Uh, what I want, yes, I want to show this picture. Do you see it, right? Yeah, we do. Yes, yeah, so this picture first. This indicate uh, that uh, this is a, a corresponding algebra of uh, uh, transport elements for arbitrary planar network. So you see that uh, they satisfy the, clo the nice closed algebra. It's, it's just that we uh, probably cannot uh, express it in our matrix form if sources and things are not separated. Mm -hmm. But what I probably also want to show is <clears throat> yes, uh, this uh, standard uh, directed planner network in Fogg-Goncharov approach. Mm -hmm. Actually, Fogg-Goncharov and Shane. So uh, now you see what I mean. So we have, you see, we have here six sources and 12 things. And we can define uh, the matrix M1 as a transport matrix from the right side to left and M2 as a transport from right to bottom. And for this network, if we construct, well, using precisely the same rules uh, that uh, were in my talk, if we construct the corresponding elements, and we consider now not just one uh, triangle, but we consider a surface glued out of well, whatever we have, four n plus uh, four, four g minus four plus whatever two s plus 
plus n triangles, then the corresponding transport element will satisfy an algebra. Uh, this is an algebra also uh, usually in, uh, in literature. It's called, well, Fock-Rossley algebra because it was formulated in our matrix structure as our matrix algebra by uh, Valodia and Lyosha. Uh, and, well, but you see that actually I don't put any restriction on the corresponding uh, networks. Also, uh, this one, again, I have no time for this, but I didn't, I didn't have time to mention the difference between GLN and SLN. So this is not so much important when we consider a planar graphs, but it becomes important when we consider actually uh, arbitrary surfaces. But here again, you can see uh, on this slide, the example, the example of the network that we usually have in mind when we are talking about, about the corresponding monodromies. Right. Okay. Uh, and this is, by the way, itself a corresponding network. It's just for a disk with three mark points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the three mark points are the three vertices of this big triangle. No, no, it's much more uh, because it's not just the mark points. It's a uh, uh, mark points with uh, flags. So it has, uh, com so in each mark point, we have a decoration by a flag. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, this means that it has a involved algebraic structure, every mark point. So at every mark point, we have a flag. This means that we actually factorize, but we don't factorize over the whole gauge group. Otherwise, we don't get anything. We factorize over, uh, say, lower triangular subgroup of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, Maxim. А? Я хочу попросить Максима, может быть, он может прокомментировать или пока нет, да? А Миши нету, да? Миши, Миши нет. нету, нет. Ага. Ну, в какой-нибудь момент он прокомментирует. Хорошо, тогда, Лень, спасибо большое. Мы еще ну потом... Что, я верну, верну назад э, угу. к своим записям или как? Или... Но э, ты хотел еще что-то сказать, да? Ну, я хотел, но я уже не успею куда Да, успею. времени Допом... уже... Мы уже два часа работаем. Два часа, нормально это. Нормально. Опа! А, нет, тут я. Нет, все, все тут, да. Опять плюхнуло. Окей, but that was my message, that actually these relations, they are very general. If we have, imagine that we have just any planar network, and then we can glue even non-planar networks. For example, that's what was in my, so uh, one of, very interesting stories that again uh, but it's not exactly correspond to goldman bracket so i just mentioned it briefly but it's it's really interesting so if i have in the same picture if i consider just the matrix product quantum matrix product so order is ma order matters here so i consider the same network that before this one or whatever with n sources and two n things. And I consider this combination of this uh, two, trans two particular transport matrices. This combination satisfy reflection equation, famous reflection equation. Again, it's just two lines actually to evaluate it, but it's, uh, it has many
many applications. And it's a famous equation by itself, so it's what is called the twisted Youngians, whatever. In the literature, in the uh, integrable systems. And the, uh, there is a ton of literature about representations of it. So, and it's also famous from geometry because it's also related to what is uh, called, you see, just, just by the list of names that really it was Nelson. Reggie, Gavrilic, Limic, De Bruyne, Ugalia, Bondel, Algebra. <laughs> so you see because it's it's appearing many uh, in many different uh, uh, in many different places in uh, algebra of geodesic functions in uh, whatever so th there are really many places where this algebra appears and now we have a description in terms of cluster variables for not only geometrical leaves how we call them but also for uh, general uh, leaves of this algebra. So we have a Darbu coordinate representation basically for them. It's uh, another part also just to mention is that we can actually come to the non-planarity in a different sort, in a different way. For instance, uh, I, Again, consider consider this uh, planner network, and again because I have uh, it separated sources and things. Uh, we can actually consider something. So we can uh, actually uh, make it on the analysis if this number of, of course, sources and things is the same. And then we come, so it gives rise not just to our matrix relation, but to our matrix relation with spectral parameters. And mu lambda, okay, so let it be mu lambda. Of course it's lambda, okay, but doesn't matter. So uh, from this statement, indeed, we can derive many, uh, many more statements. And again, this is a black box, so it's just any, any network here, any planner network. So we can parameterize many things using uh, this elementary observation, because remember the proof was just really elementary. But okay, so uh, I definitely have to stop. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot. Once again, are there any questions to the speaker? No, all questions were. Есть вопросы, Леня? А вот мы слушали когда-то примерно полгода назад как бы сказать, инфинитизимальный вариант всей этой теории от Миши, про, где он, у него все было коммутативно и только была пассонова структура. Соответственно, значит, можно квантовать каждый шаг, как вот в твоих рассказах сделано, а можно ли 
наоборот идти, взять окончательный ответ и только окончательный ответ про проквантовать. Это... <связь> ну, так, в общем, люди и делали раньше. <связь> да. А, а это а то, что все, все, вот мы сейчас прослушали, это просто, как бы сказать, для полноты картины видно, что можно, что каждый шаг вот этого самого разделения этих операторов на элементарные, как вот это делалось в, в, в случае пассоновых структур, Здесь можно тоже это так же и проделать в квантовом случае, да? Да, ну там в квантовом случае больше ограничений, в том смысле, что, ну вот я говорю, например, в пуассонном случае совершенно не важно, когда мы обсуждаем там скобку Голдмана настоящую, ну в принципе мы, в общем, не заботимся о том, как эти пути там они... Можем работать для ламинации, то есть она работает в гораздо более общем случае. В квантовом случае всегда есть вопрос, например, даже, даже со стрейсом, со следом, как его определять для коммутирующих операторов. Это не такая простая задача, в принципе. Особенно, если там этот оператор встречается в произведении несколько раз в разных местах. Ну да, там э, квантовый след, там разные люди определяют по-разному, и какой способ выгоднее, не очень понятно. Вот, ну, в принципе, да, это, то есть, то есть пуассонного наука в этом смысле, она попроще и более общая. То есть там не надо заботиться о каких-то вещах, о которых иногда приходится заботиться в квантовой. С другой стороны, что я люблю в квантовых соотношениях, что их записывать быстрее и легче. Вот. Компактнее. А если, а если положить вот, это самое, вот эти слайд и положить рядом вторую стопку бумагу, бумажки, то правильно я понимаю, что в принципе у каждого утверждения этого рассказа можно посмотреть на вот этот аналог пуассоновый аналог, как это, да, зимальный простой, да? Шаг всегда, за шагом. Да, всегда просто мы берем, берем Q там E в степени и H и смотрим первый порядок по, по H, первый да? порядок разложения. Угу. Понятно, спасибо. Хорошо, спасибо большое, Лень. Мы попробуем между собой поговорить, что из этого и как пустить в работу. Но то, что можно пустить, это и нужно. Это видно. Спасибо еще раз. Но я я попробую это все перекинуть в PDF, но mm -hmm. будет здоровый файл какой-то. Ну что делай? За 30 да. мегабайт. Ну это нормально. У нас же выкладываются и все видеозаписи всех лекций. Хорошо, спасибо. Ну, спасибо, что послушали. Давай да. я расширю тогда назад. Угу. Спасибо большое. Спасибо, утомил. Конечно, но это нормально. Это даже отлично. Так и должно быть. Все-таки чего-то как-то такого сказать что-то из, из чего-то что-то можно извлечь.